What's up guys, it's me, Cleveland Brown Jr. And today we're going to be talking about the top 10 strangest slash coolest tanks that never made it past the prototype stage or that never made it into production. Now this is actually a redo of a video called Top 10 Worst Slash Strangest Tanks of All Time. But I decided to not just redo it, I want to turn this into a series where I find the strangest slash rarest tanks and make a top 10 video list about them. So let's get into it. Number 10, the Gefotschfeld Versace Traga or VG-04. The VG-04 was an experimental tank destroyer from 1974. Its main armament consisted of two 120mm Rhine metal smoothbore main guns. Its speed was 69 kilometers per hour. Now this tank or tank destroyer or self-propelled gun was basically a, a Yak Tiger II on steroids. Except this gun, this tank had two main guns for double action. Now this vehicle also reminds me of the Swedish Strevagen 103 or the STVR or the STRV 103. You know, the last um, turretless self-propelled gun used by the Swedish military. Uh, this tank is just, I mean, look at it. I mean, it has two guns. That's double the action, double the stopping power. That's why I nicknamed this tank the Gefuxville Panzer. Because when this tank comes around, or if this tank had been adopted, that ass would be getting double tapped. Now, it's time for me to go into my lame, boring black guy voice to explain this next tank which was from World War I, or the Ursen Wildkrieg, as you would call it in German. Number 9, the Land Panzer Cruiser Project of 1915 through 1917. The Land Panzer Cruiser was a series of two German prototype tanks from 1915 through 1917. These tanks were both flat heavy tanks. These tanks were very similar to ironclads used during the American Civil War. The first tank, the Land Panzer Cruiser I, was designed in 1915 and was based on another prototype vehicle called the Panzer Cruiser from 1913. The Land Panzer Cruiser I's main armament was never installed as the tank was never finished. Its armor thickness was between 6 and 8 millimeters. The speed of this tank was about 8 miles per hour. The Land Panzer Cruiser had only one prototype built, the one you see in the photograph. In 1917, Frederick Gobel, the designer of the Land Panzer Cruiser, designed the Land Panzer Cruiser II. This was meant to be a super heavy tank. The vehicle had an armor thickness of 101.6 millimeters but the tank's hull was never completed. The photograph you see is of the tank's track system. The speed of the Land Panzer Cruiser II was 7.4 miles per hour. The Land Panzer Cruiser I was probably the better of the examples as this project was almost finished. The only thing it was missing was its turret. That's really it. Number 8, the IT-1 Dragon. The IT-1 Dragon was an experimental guided missile tank destroyer from 1964. Its main armament was one 3M7 Dragon pop-up anti-tank missile, or pop-up guided anti-tank missile. This missile, the M-37, had a maximum killing range of 300 meters to 3,300 meters. The armor penetration of the 3M7 Dracon anti-tank missile was 250 millimeters. The Dracon speed overall was 50 kilometers per hour or 31 miles per hour. Now, the Dracon was my fa is my favorite 
Soviet experimental tank from the Cold War. As it had no main gun and its main armament consisted of anti-tank missiles, the most potent and the most effective of anti-tank weapons up to date. For example, the American tow missile is probably one of the coolest anti-tank missile systems still being used. Now back in the 60s, this Draken missile was pretty much um, the equivalent of a tow except it didn't have the armor penetration. In fact, let me change that. The Draken missile was pretty much like an AT-3 Shagger, you know, but more advanced. Um, this tank overall would have been a nightmare for M60 Patton crews because the M60 Patton only had 250 millimeters of armor. So this missile would have cut through it like butter. Keep in mind, the M60 Patton was the standard American tank in 1964 through 1968. So this Draken would have been extremely effective against it. The main reason why the Draken was not adopted was because of its storage capacity. This tank could only hold 15 missiles. You know, and then during the Cold War, keep in mind, the Soviet Union, just like the U.S., was preparing for World War III. So 15 missiles, that's like, what, half an hour worth of combat? After that, after you ran out of ammunition, you're basically toast. And keep in mind, this is a World War III scenario, so you're going to be having massive tank battles left and right. And 15 rounds just wasn't cutting it. I always thought the Soviets could have just expanded the tank's hull, but then again, they would have just made it a larger target, so, yeah. But still, the Drake Gun is my favorite experimental Russian tank. Number 7, the Trafast Wagon. The Trafast Wagon, also known as the Panzer Cap Wagon Trafast, or the Schwer Rad Panzer Trafast, was an, it was an experimental prototype heavy wheel tank from 1916. This was another one of Germany's forgotten tanks of the First World War. This vehicle was armed with two 20mm Becker auto cannons. Keep in mind that your fast wagon is a giant steam wheel tank. It doesn't actually run on steam. This vehicle was meant to plow over enemy trenches. Just imagine if you were a French or a or British soldier or an American soldier and you had to go up against a beast like the Trafast Wagon. This vehicle was armed with two 20mm Becker auto cannons. Its armor is unknown and its speed is unknown. The vehicle never made it past the experimental stage. It was pretty much abandoned in 1917 in favor of the A7V project. So yeah, another cool tank from Germany's military past that most tank enthusiasts know nothing about. Number 6, the Russian Tsar tank. The Tsar tank, also known as the Lembedinko tank, was an experimental heavy wheel tank from 1914. This was Russia's first super heavy tank to be built. This tank was armed with two 76.2 millimeter M1902 Poplovsky field guns. Its armor was unknown, but was estimated to be between 6 and 10 millimeters. Its speed was 10.9 miles per hour. The Tsar tank was basically a giant armored tricycle meant to topple over enemy trenches steamroll the enemy infantry while mowing them down with machine gun and, and light field artillery. The Tsar tank never made it past the experimental stage. The tank was tested in 1915 and found to have some flaws. The tank was eventually abandoned in 1916-1917 and was eventually scrapped in 1923 following the Russian Civil War. The Tsar tank is just too cool, you know. Even though the word cool is kind of lame nowadays. The Tsar tank is my spirit tank animal, if there was ever such a thing. 
Number five, the Polish Krasowic tank of 1918. The Krasowic tank was an improvised wheel tank from 1918. This tank is very strange. It's kind of a mixture between a tank, a half track, and an armored car. This vehicle was armed with three 7.92 millimeter maximum Spandu MG08 machine gun and was powered by a 32 horsepower water cooled engine. This vehicle had an armor thickness of 10 millimeters. Um, this vehicle was built from an agricultural tractor called a Prog Model 1914. So yeah, this is literally an improvised wheel tank. So uh, the Krasowic tank was uh, used during the Polish-Soviet War and the Polish War of Independence between 1918 and 1921 to be exact. So yeah, this is one of those rare um, Polish tanks most people will never hear about. So yeah. Number four, the Russian Vestik Hood tank of 1914. The Vestik Hood was an experimental light tank designed in 1914. Keep in mind, this was the first Russian tank to actually be built. There was one before this that was designed called the Medilev tank, but the Vestik Hood came first. The Vestik Hood was armed with a 7.62 mm PM 1910 machine gun. It had 8 mm of armor and it had a speed of 26.7 miles per hour. The Vestic Hood had a single track system in which the track system was placed in the center of the tank rather than having two separate tracks as most tanks traditionally do. The Vestic Hood tank was one of the coolest Russian tanks designed during the First World War. But unfortunately, this tank never made it past the experimental stage. Now, the main reason is because the Tsar Russian government stopped funding the original Vestik Hood project in 1915. When the project was at least 90% finished, the only thing that was left for the designer to do was to design the, was to actually build the turret for the 7.62 millimeter PM Maxim machine gun. That didn't happen. But in 1915, a Vestic Hood 2 was designed. This was basically a redesign with a dual turret fitted with two 7.62 millimeter machine guns rather than one. Just like the first Vestic Hood, funding eventually ran out and the Vestic Hood 2 project eventually came to an end in 1916-1917. And one year after that, the Russian Civil War broke out in 1918, thus putting an end to the Vestic Hood project as a whole. Number 3, the Osaldo Mias tank from 1935. The Osaldo or Ansaldo Mias was an experimental tank kit designed between 1935 and 1936. This was an Italian tank kit. Now if you thought tank kits were small, well the Italians thought, let's make them smaller and even dopier looking. The Osaldo Mias was armed with one twin 8mm Brita machine gun or one 45mm Brexia grenade launcher. Its speed was a, small, was a slow 5 kilometers or 3 miles per hour. Um, this was pretty much the smallest Italian tank ever designed. If you thought the L333 through L338 series of turretless tank kits were small, the Mias is even smaller than that. This vehicle was designed for Italian mountain troops known as the RVD or RVD. I can't pronounce it correctly because I'm not Italian. Um, yeah. For Italian mountain troops, this would have actually been useful. I mean, they had very few armored vehicles. The L333 could um, go up the side of a mountain, but I don't know. When I see Italian footage from World War One and Two, I kind of doubt that. But 
then again, I've seen some footage of NL-333 moving along the hillsides um, during the invasion of um, Greece and Yugoslavia. So, yeah, this vehicle, the Mias, would have been good for that type of combat. This is a strange Italian tank. I mean, it had one of the smallest engines ever put into an armored fighting vehicle. This is probably one of the smallest European tanks of all time, you know. So, yeah. Number two, the Pioneer Skeleton Tank. The Pioneer Skeleton Tank was a prototype infantry support tank from 1918. This tank was designed by the United States. Its main armament was a 7.62 mm Colt Browning M1919 machine gun and specifically speaking the model 1918 prototype of the M1919 machine gun. This tank had an armor thickness of only 12 mm. Its speed was 5 miles per hour. Oh yes, this tank is one of the strangest tanks of World War I. I still can't figure out why the United States military thought an ectoskeleton tank design would be good. I mean, it's a cool looking tank and I would like to see this in any World War I video game in the future. Um, it's basically a, it's almost like the inner workings of a British Mark 1 through 5 tank minus its armor. Um, this tank had a fighting compartment, which is the box-shaped center. Um, its armor thickness uh, wasn't that good. I mean, 12 millimeters. I'm pretty sure a German um, Mauser T gewehr can still penetrate this in one shot. Uh, other than that, I mean, I always thought the skeleton tank was a good design technically in terms of just looking cool or looking you know original but you know in all honesty this thing could be easily uh, disabled by with a single a canister shot from a 77 millimeter field gun the 77 millimeter was a standard german um, artillery during the first world war so yeah other than that, the skeleton tank is just one of those strange tanks that most people don't hear about when it comes to American tanks designed before World War II and during World War I. And finally, number one, the French Boyrault Project of 1915. The Boyrault Project, also known as the Diplodocus Militaris, was a series of two experimental trench crossing tanks designed in 1915. Now keep in mind, trench crosser slash land ships were the terms used for tanks in the years before 1916, which was the year in which the British Mark I entered service. The first tank to be used, you know, in World War I, and the first tank to be used in the combat period. The Barolt's main armament was unknown, but was most likely a Hotchkiss Model 1909, as it was the smallest gun that could fit in there. Its armor is also unknown because it was never measured, and the first Barolt project had no armor at all because it was never completed. The, sh the speed of this vehicle was 3 kilometers per hour, or 1.8 miles per hour, which is pretty slow for a World War I tank. Keep in mind, most tanks only move between 4 and 8 miles per hour, so 1.8 miles per hour is even slower. The Boirot project is, is probably the strangest French tank project ever. I mean, just look at it. It looks like a moving connect set or a moving block of Legos made of steel rather than plastic. Um, these tanks were meant to run over enemy trenches which in 1914-1915, those were the main obstacles of the French military. Um, that's really it. These projects never made it beyond the prototype stage, and they were pretty much the rarest of the French World War I tanks, as there were only two built, the Model 1 and Model 2. 
The Model 2 is the coolest looking one. It looks like something out of Bionicles or Legos or something, you know. So yeah, these were the top 10 strangest tanks for list number one. Keep in mind, this is going to be a series, so whatever tank I didn't put on the list, expect that in either, in either the next list or the list afterwards. So until next time, this was J-Man Time signing off. And if you guys have any other ideas for videos, just put them in the comment section. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be tanks. It could be planes. It could be submarines, battleships, um, small arms. I mean, even medieval weapons.